Good morning, Wellspring. It is, thank you. It is so good to see all of you here today, whether that is in person or online. For those of you who do not know me, my name is David Kelly, and this is my amazing mom, Danielle Kelly. Aww. Yes, thank you for the claps. You deserve applause. <laughs> You're so sweet. I love getting to be your mom. It's so fun. Uh, we are so glad that you are here with us today. And if it is your very first time, David and I wanted to start our time together by just saying thank you so much for being here. We would love to get to know you. The way we do that here at Wellspring is there's a QR code on the seat back of the chair in front of you. If it's your first time, go ahead and scan that. At some point during the service today, it's going to pop up a connection card that you can fill out just to let us know who you are. And if you're watching online, your host are actually going to drop that exact connection card in the link in your chat section right now. So make sure you fill that out. Um, but if you're in the room, we would also love the chance to get to meet you. Um, after the service today, you can stop by the blue tent if you'd like. I'll actually be in the lobby today. I would love to get the chance to shake your hand and just say thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yes, absolutely. And if you are online, could you please do us a favor and just subscribe, like, turn on notifications, share the live streams. If you do these things, not only is it going to help you stay more connected on our online platforms, but it is also going to help expand our online platform. So it would be greatly appreciated if you guys could do some stuff yeah, like that. So David and I, our family is getting ready for summer. Yes. It feels like it's just almost here. We cannot wait. So David, I want to know what's something that you're most excited about for this summer? The thing that I am most excited about this summer is that this July, our student ministry is going back to our summer camp. Yes, thank you guys. Uh, I am so very excited. Uh, not only is this going to be one of the most fun week of these students' lives, but it's also going to be one of the most spiritually satisfying weeks of these students' lives. And I know for me, it, it was so life-changing both times that I went. And I feel bad for all of you adults because it is just so much fun. Uh, but signups are going to be done at the end of May. So you have about a week left for signups. So students, if you aren't signed up, you definitely should sign up. And if you are signed up, Go find some students who are, and just as vi invite as many friends yes. as possible because they're not going to want to miss it. It's going to yeah. be awesome. It is an incredible week. I'm so grateful we get to be a part of that. Um, another thing that we're doing this summer starts next Sunday. We are changing our service times. Uh, we announced this at Night of Worship last Sunday night. So starting next Sunday, our service times are going to be 930 and 11. So if you come at 830, We'll probably just ask you to hang out and help us get ready for our first service at 9.30. So go ahead and make a note for those changes and make sure you're back here to, in, to join us. It is going to be an amazing Sunday of worship. We want you to be here. Yes, and speaking of worship, I don't want to waste any more time because we are starting a brand new series, Fruit Forward, yes. and I am so excited for it. I was lucky enough to sit in the 8.30 service, and let me tell you, Pastor Trey does an amazing job. So why don't you guys <laughs> stand to your feet and come and sing with us. Come on, let's put our hands together, come on. Let me hear you sing it loud. There 
nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know, yes, I know. Sing it out. Nations bow, mountains shake. Yeah. 
morning, good morning. Why don't you have a seat? Hope everybody's doing well. Glad you're all here. If you're a guest today, my name's Trey. I'm the pastor here. Thanks for joining us in the room. Thank you for joining us online. We're kicking off a brand new series today that I'm very, very excited about with a very intriguing title. And so before we even get started, I just want to, this isn't a test. It's not a trick. How many of you are familiar with the phrase, fruit forward? And you know what it means. See, they're scared to raise their hand in church because fruit forward is a wine term. It refers to a certain type of wine. And so the people who know that have been wondering for a week, why are we going to talk about this in church? And now the rest of you are wondering, why are we going to talk about this in church? And the answer is very simple. It's because I think this phrase gives us a perfect picture of something our Heavenly Father wants for every single one of us. But before I can explain the picture, let me define the term. Here's what fruit forward means in the wine world. Okay? Fruit forward is a popular term to describe a style of wine where the fruit flavors are dominant. Other wines might emphasize savory notes or have plenty of fruit flavors, but they are more integrated with the wine's other elements. But in fruit forward wines, fruit notes prevail. So when they refer to a wine as a fruit forward wine, wine, what that means is the most dominant thing you're going to taste is fruit. The first thing you experience is fruit. Fruit almost overpowers anything else associated with the wine. Now, if you are a wine drinker today, there's absolutely no judgment for that in this house. If you're, if you're a wine drinker today, you may enjoy fruit-forward wines, or you may consider yourself to have more of a sophisticated palate, and maybe you enjoy more subtle notes, you enjoy savory wines, and I understand that. But if you're here today, and maybe you've tried wine and you didn't really like it, just just wasn't for you, odds are you did not try a fruit-forward wine. Because it's generally considered that fruit-forward wines are the most accessible wines. They're the easiest to drink. They're kind of the best tasting initially. Most other wines are what we would call an acquired taste. Now, you've probably heard the phrase before, but let me define it for you. An acquired taste is an appreciation for something that's unlikely to be enjoyed by a person who has not had substantial exposure to it. Right? And so when it comes to the wine world, people understand if, you, if nobody's ever had wine before, you want to try wine for the first time, they try a fruit-forward fruit wine because they're more likely to like it than not. Otherwise, it's an acquired taste. You have to really work at it. You have to try hard. You have to drink a lot of it before it begins to taste good. Now, I know you have a couple of questions. Number one, no, we're not going to drink wine. <laughs> we're not drinking wine in here. Number two, what in the world does this have to do with anything to do with church? I'm going to get there right now. Just like in the wine world, Fruit forward is a little easier to go, a better first experience, and other wines can be more of an acquired taste. I think the same thing is true for people. I think there are people we encounter in our lives that are fruit forward people. And they are just glorious to be around the second you meet them, you love them, they just bring joy to your heart. And then there are other people we meet, and let's be honest. They're a bit of an acquired taste. <laughs> How many of you have ever been with a friend of a friend, and your friend's like, man, I can't wait for you to meet this guy. You're going to love him. He's the best. Or like, you know, it's maybe, maybe a spouse of someone. Maybe, maybe, your, maybe your kids bring home their new boyfriend, their new girlfriend, and they're so excited, and you meet them. And after the first encounter, they leave, and you're just like, I don't get it. <laughs> and what do they always say? What is always the first response back? Oh, you just have to get to know them. You just have to get to know them. And what do we think? Well, who would want to get to know them? <laughs> now, lest you think I am making fun and mocking acquired taste people, I humbly confess to you this morning, I'm a bit of an acquired taste. <laughs> I understand that. I am an incredibly shy person by nature. It doesn't make any sense why I do what I do for a living, but I'm an incredibly shy person. I'm also an incredibly opinionated person. So if we meet for the first time in a public setting, I'm going to be quiet until I think you're wrong. <laughs> Which, again, is a winning combination for a pastor. 
But see, God in his infinite wisdom, because he loves me, he paired me with my lovely wife, Danielle, who any of you have actually met her and spent any time around her and encountered her, she just overflows with love and kindness and is just a delight to meet. My wife is fruit forward. I'm a bit of an acquired taste. <laughs> now, <laughs> some of that has to do with our personalities. But if I'm very honest with you this morning, some of it has to do with the fact that she just follows Jesus better than I do. And that's really why I want to talk about this. That's really the whole point of this is I'm convinced that the God of the universe has called us to fruit forward lives. He has called us to lives that are better than what you just have to get to know him. Ah, you just have to spend some time with him. And I know this is true because one of his most faithful servants, a guy named Paul, we talk about a lot here at Wellspring because Paul wrote about half of what we call the New Testament. In one of Paul's letters, specifically to the church at Galatia, he addresses this very issue. And he says, hey, make no mistake, the God of the universe wants us to live fruit-forward lives. And in fact, he even categorizes the fruits. He tells us what they are. Here's what he says. He says, hey, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, if you have a church background, if you grew up in church, you may be familiar with this verse. You may be familiar with what we call the, the, these, these traits. We call these traits the fruit of the Spirit. Meaning, these are the things that come from a relationship with God. And here's the list again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, quick question. If your first encounter with someone revealed that they were filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, if those things flowed out of this new person, do you think you're going to be naturally drawn to them? Or do you think you're going to say, I better take some time. I better get to know them. No, it's a very appealing characteristic. And here's the really cool thing about those traits. They're not just beneficial for other people. Is there any person in this room who couldn't honestly say that my life, your life, our lives would be better if it was filled with more love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control? Not all our lives would be. Even if you're here today and you're not sure you believe in God. Even if you're here today because somebody invited you, you're just kind of checking out the things of God, you're not sure about this Jesus thing. We can agree. Life would be better. My life would be more complete, would be more satisfying, more whole, if I had these fruit in my life. And so what we're going to do for the next several weeks is we are going to dive in to the Word of God, we're going to dive into what He's done for humanity to discover how we all can live a more fruit forward life. I say more because I know some of you people, you are fruit forward. You are fantastic. Some of you are some acquired taste. I'm just kidding. I'm not. But what we're going to do over the next weeks is we're going to learn how to live a life and how to experience more of these things in our life. Because that's really the question, right? We all look at that list and we think that, looks, that list sounds great. And maybe we, we knock one of them out of the park. Maybe we knock two of them out of the park. But God promises all of them. And so the question we have is how? How are we to walk in such a way to where the Holy Spirit, what Paul says, can produce these things in our life? Well, that's the question I want to begin answering today. And I just want to invite you to be a part of this series over the next several weeks as we dive in to discover how we can live a more fruit forward life. How we can live a life filled with those amazing gifts that come from God. And it begins where life begins. It begins with Jesus. And so what I want to do today is I want to take us back to one of Jesus' teachings. It's a pretty famous teaching. Jesus actually taught his disciples this concept, the concept that if they trust him, he will produce fruit in their lives. He taught them this on the night he was going to be arrested. 
if you know the story at all, Jesus had dinner with his disciples where he, he prepared them for the fact that he was going to go away. They, they celebrated something called the Lord's Supper. It's a thing we still do as a church today. And then they got up and left, and they were making their way towards the Garden of Gethsemane, which was Jesus' favorite place to pray, and it's where he was going to be arrested. They didn't know that. He did. And on the way from the dinner to the Garden of Gethsemane, they passed by some grapevines. And Jesus knew they were going to pass by those grapevines. And as they passed by those grapevines, Jesus looked at his disciples and taught them something. He taught them the key. He taught them the step they must take to live a fruit forward life. He taught them the process by which he was going to begin to produce these amazing gifts inside each and every one of us. And so what I want to do today is I want to take us to that moment in time. I want to take us to the text where Jesus teaches that to his disciples. Because as he's teaching his disciples that one man, a guy named John, decided, I'm going to write this down. And he recorded that teaching for us so that almost 2,000 years later we can read it. And we can hear Jesus speak directly to us to tell us how to take steps towards the fruit forward life he wants for all of us. And so if you have your Bibles, open them to John chapter 15. If not, it's going to be up on the screen. But in John chapter 15, starting in verse 1, Jesus begins with a metaphor. And I'll just warn you, it's an intricate metaphor, so I'm going to have to explain it. But as you allow the Holy Spirit to, to illuminate your minds, to understand what is happening here, it just changes everything about how we understand our relationship with God and how we understand what He really wants to do in us and through us and how He truly does want to give us a fruit forward existence. So, starting in John 15, verse 1, here's the first thing Jesus says. He says, I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He's beginning a metaphor. I am the grapevine. My father is the gardener. Now, to us, we hear that and we just think of grapes. 2,000 years ago, to Jesus' disciples who had been brought up in the Jewish tradition, they heard Israel. Because throughout the Old Testament, Israel is referred to as the grapevine. The nation of Israel was phase one in God's rescue plan for humanity. The nation of Israel is what gave us Jesus. But what Jesus was saying in this moment when he says, I am the true grapevine, he was declaring his divinity. He was saying, I am God. What was being delivered through Israel is now being completed in me. Trust in me. Have faith in me. Life is found in me. I am the true one and only soul grapevine. His disciples would have instantly knew what he was saying. Oh, you're saying everything's changing. You're saying you're the guy. You're saying that it's you, it's all you, it's nothing but you. Focus on you. He says, that's exactly right. I'm the grapevine. My dad is the gardener. My dad is in charge of everything. And then he keeps going with the image. And he says, my dad, he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. So not only does he say that he is the vine, he completes the image by saying that we, humans, are the branches. The ones who choose to pursue him and follow him, he'll prune. The ones who do not choose to follow him, he'll perch. And they will not stay connected for eternity. But don't miss the, 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 the power of the message and the power of the metaphor here. Because what he's painting is this picture. Because everyone understands in real life that a grapevine is the source of life and that the branches grow out from it. And so what he is communicating through to his disciples and to us is that just in the same way, if we want to experience true life, specifically a fruit-bearing life, we will connect ourselves to the vine. We will connect ourselves to the source. We'll go to him to be the source of life. And in the same way, just as the branch connects to the vine for life, the vine moves through the branch to reproduce life. Through what? The fruit. Fruit is how nature reproduces. 
So the vine moves through the branch, produces fruit, and new life comes from it. And what Jesus is saying is, same thing's going to be true in your life. Same thing's going to be true when you connect to me. When you connect to me, I'm going to move through you. I'm going to grow you. I'm going to produce those fruit in you. And it's going to make your life better. And oh, by the way, it's going to change the world. And because of that, the branches that are with me, I'm going to prune. The branches that aren't, I'm going to purge. Pruning means doing what's best for us to make us more fruitful. And that's what Jesus is reminding us of. He's saying, hey, I'm going to do things in your life, and it might hurt. Pruning hurts sometimes. Pruning involves cutting things away. Pruning involves redirecting vines. But it's all being done on purpose by the gardener in an effort to grow us more. So that means in our lives, God might prune relationships. God might prune opportunities. God might prune bad habits. God might prune addictions. God might prune other sins, things he's constantly trying to remove from our lives to make us more fruitful. And I know some of you are like me. You're reading that other part where it says he cuts off the ones who don't bear fruit. And you're all wondering, well, how much fruit you got to produce to not be cut off? <laughs> right? I understand that. That's what we all live in fear of. It's like, oh, man, am I, not, am I a good enough Christian? And it's like Jesus knew that that's what his disciples were thinking and that's what we were going to think. Because he has this sentence next. He tells them. Uh-oh, we locked again? There we go. He tells them, he says, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I've given you. See, the disciples are wondering, am I good enough? Am I going to be cut off? And he just tells them, you've already been pruned. You've already been purified by the message. It's okay. What he's saying is, no, this isn't about performance. This isn't about being good enough. The disciples had placed their faith in him, and so they were in. Now, again, he's saying this to a group of men who within the next few hours, most of them are going to abandon him when he's arrested. One, a guy named Peter is going to deny he knows Jesus three times. Peter is not going to bear fruit tonight. And it's in that context, Jesus tells him, you've already been pruned. You've already been purified by my message. He's saying, no, 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 if you believe me, if you place your faith in me, that's it. That's the list. There is no more debate. You are with me until the end. So this isn't about eternal life. This isn't about being connected to our Heavenly Father. This is about how fruitful we can be. Because as the disciples are going to see in just a few minutes, and as we see in our lives, we can be Christians. We can love Jesus. We can follow Jesus. But we can still choose to ignore Jesus at certain times. We can choose to reject his pruning. We can choose to reject when he says, hey, I want you to go this way. We can choose not to do that. And what he's trying to get us to see is, okay, that's not going to change our relationship. That's just going to change your effectiveness. That's not going to change how I feel about you. It's just going to change what I can do through you. It's not going to limit my love. It's going to limit the fruit in your life. Because it's a choice for us. It's a choice each day to wake up and decide how fruitful do we want to be. How full do we want to live of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That's our choice. Jesus is simply saying, I'm the source of it. And the more connected you are to me, the more you're going to have. Because there is no limit to what I want to do in you and through you to transform the world around you. And so he paints this picture, and we get this image in our head. And then, as we understand what he's saying, in the next verse, he invites us to make a choice. And it's the choice that will lead to fruitfulness. It's the choice that will lead us to live fruit-forward lives. And this is the choice. Remain in me. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Again, on the basic image of the metaphor, it makes perfect sense. If you cut a branch off of the vine, it does not bear any more fruit. It's dead. He's telling me and you and all of us, in the same way, you can willfully choose not to disconnect from my love, not to disconnect from eternity, but to disconnect from the day-to-day -day fruitfulness I want to produce in your life. 
You can choose to disobey me. You can choose to walk the other way. And I want to encourage you not to do that. He's saying, I encourage you, I beg with you, I plead you to remain in me. And I know in the 21st century, remain in me is a bit of a weird thing to think about because remain in sounds like we don't move. It sounds like we just pause. It sounds like we're, we're static. And so I want you to think about it this way. We remain in Jesus when we walk with Jesus. Jesus does not invite us to a standing still relationship. Jesus invites us to a radical relationship of life change and moving and changing. And I've been thinking about this, and it occurred to me that there's a really good picture that we're all familiar with that I could illustrate it with. And, yes, I'm going to open an umbrella inside. So if you think it's bad luck, I'll remind you that I'm talking about the resurrection power of Jesus. And so we don't need to worry about bad luck here. Um, uh, seriously, Jesus juke. So, we all understand the concept of an umbrella, right? The only usefulness of an umbrella is to remain in the umbrella. So, in my brain, what Jesus is inviting us to is to walk alongside him through life as he carries an umbrella. Because the only way I can remain in the protection of that umbrella is to walk with the holder of the umbrella. And we are completely, we decide how much we stay in and how much we stay out. But the umbrella never moves. And if we want the best for our lives, we're going to remain in the protection of the umbrella. Come up here for a second, my love. I want to illustrate something for you. This is fun. An illustration where I'm Jesus and you have to follow me. <laughs> I'll follow you anywhere. Please. Oh, thank you. I told her to say that. Um, but so this is what life looks like when Jesus says, remain in me. Remain in me, and when I go this way, remain. And you stay protected. You stay safe. And you know what? If something comes, I can actually use my umbrella to protect you. I can keep it. Sometimes I may decide you need some sunshine. Sometimes I may decide that the rain's too much, but you need a little rain now. But here's what happens. There will always be a moment where Jesus will want to go this way, and you may decide you want to go that way. And when that happens... The result is usually at some point you realize, you know what? Things aren't going like they used to go. I'm not quite as fruitful. I don't get it. Man, why am I nervous all the time? Why am I anxious all the time? Why am I in a bad mood all the time? Man, I used to be filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, and I'm not anymore. I don't understand. What's wrong, Jesus? What have you done? And Jesus would say, I'm right here. And I'm inviting you to remain in me. Remain with me. Choose me. Come back to me, baby. Choose me. <laughs> Follow me. Walk with me. And you'll live a life full of abundance and fruit like you never imagined. But it's only when we take him up at his invitation and we choose to remain in him by walking with him. That is the daily choice that we make, and that's the choice we're going to talk about. You can take that for me? Thank you. That's the choice we're going to talk about for the next few weeks, is how can we choose to pursue Jesus in all of those areas, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. How do we remain in Jesus to get more love? How do we remain in Jesus to get more joy? You know, I know a lot of people that are full of joy, but they don't have any self-control. I know a lot of people with self-control, they ain't got no joy. <laughs> Jesus is not saying pick one. With Jesus, it is all of the above. But we have to choose to remain. That's what he says next. He says it again. Yes, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, he might as well have said those who remain with me. And I and them will produce how much fruit? Much fruit. Abundant fruit. Undeniable fruit. Visible fruit. Fruit forward living. And then, then Jesus drops a bomb. He says, remain in me, you'll produce fruit. For apart from me, 
You can do nothing. Nothing. We kind of want to roll our eyes at Jesus, right? But, bro, come on. Nothing? I can start a business apart from you. I can do all sorts of, what are you talking about? Apart from me, you can do nothing. I get I can't do everything, but, but nothing? Really? But you got to remember, Jesus is speaking on behalf of his eternal heavenly father who has an eternal view of the world. And when your view is eternal, the finite, the here and now, doesn't matter a whole lot. It's eternal. And so eternally speaking, what he is saying is, yes, 100%. 100%. If you want to change eternity, ride with me. Because apart from me, nothing. Everything else will fade away. Eternity is what will ultimately matter. In fact, this is how God can keep some of the promises we think he's let us down on. Like God promises love and joy and peace, and God promises to turn it for good, and then bad things happen, and we're like, God, you let us down. He's like, eternity's not over yet. I'm still working on this. I'm still moving. I'm still changing. You don't know the end of the story. I do, and my word is true. And so what he's inviting us to consider in this moment is to step back and evaluate our lives and say, okay, what really matters? Because he gives us the choice. We can determine what matters in our lives. We are free to do as we please and what we want, but we should take into consideration that we are being given very clear instructions and a clear invitation to live a better life from the God of the universe who loved us so much, he sacrificed his son for our benefit, from the God of the universe that was so powerful that he raised his son from the dead, the God of the universe that saw fit to record those teachings for thousands of years and create a place for us to all to come in the 21st century to still hear these truths, to still have our lives transformed by them. And his words never return void. It's never failed. And it's always eternally satisfied. And so it is with that perspective that Jesus says, remain in me. Remain with me. Follow me. Pursue me. Trust me in every single area of your life. And when you do, here's what you can count on. You can count on a life filled with love. Love for God. Love for yourself. Love for other people. A life filled with joy. True joy. Joy that does not require circumstances to be correct to be felt. Joy. Peace, patience, the ability to endure when we don't understand what's going on. He promises us kindness and goodness. That kindness and goodness when that tourist needs to get from that lane to that lane and they don't care that you're behind them. Goodness of God instead of what some of us do in that moment. The fruit of the horn. Ah! Faithfulness, generous, self-control. I need self-control. That's the one. This is what our Heavenly Father promises. This is what He invites us to experience. He invites us to expect. This isn't a hope. This is a guarantee. He says, remain in me. Trust me. Walk with me. I will fill your life with these things. And it's area by area. It's pocket by pocket. And so what I want you to do today is I want you to begin asking yourself a question. And I want you to get ready to come back next week, and I want you to stay with us through this entire series because God really does want to grow these things in us. But here's the question I want you to ask. And if you are so brave, you can ask it of a friend. You can ask it of a family member. You can ask it of a spouse. But ask that in my life, Do I live fruit forward, or am I an acquired taste? 
Because here's the reality. If there's any area in your life where you are not remaining in Jesus, in that area you are an acquired taste to someone. Someone is having to dig deep to be patient with you. So ask them. But I'll tell you right now, friends, family, and spouses, if they ask you the question and you answer, you got to ask it back. All right? It's got to be a two-way asking of this. Because we are all in certain areas acquired tastes. We're all in certain areas you had to just get to know them kind of people. And that's okay. That's personality driven. But the promise of Jesus is as we remain in him and pursue him that our lives will become more fruit forward. That the dominant overriding characteristics of our lives would be love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And all that begins when we understand this fundamental truth, that we remain in Jesus when we walk with Jesus. So simple question. Ask God to bring to mind this week areas of your life where you are not walking with Jesus. Areas of your life where you are not remaining in Jesus. We're all going to have them. We're not perfect. There's no judgment here. That's why we're going to talk about this for the next few weeks together. But as Jesus has made clear, we're the ones who have to take the step. We're the ones who have to look for him and take a step towards him and say, I want to remain in you. I want to follow you. So the first step, Jesus, I want to follow you. Show me. Show show me the places where, where I've stepped outside of the protection you've given me. Show me where I'm not remaining in you and then show me the path back. For the vast majority of us, that's the prayer to pray. But in a room like this, I know there are some people who it's not about remaining with Jesus. It's about choosing Jesus to begin with. You've heard about Jesus, but you've never begun a relationship with Jesus. You've never placed your faith in Jesus. You've never said, I want to attach myself to you. And so your first step to the fruit forward life is to begin a relationship with the God of the universe through his son to connect to the grapevine and surrender your life to the goodness of the gardener who is going to prune and bring you along to produce the maximum amount of fruit possible in your lives. And so if that's you today, I want to give you an opportunity to begin that relationship with Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to connect to the source of life. So I'm going to ask everyone in the room just to bow their heads for a moment. Bow their heads, close their eyes. And if today you would say, yes, man, I, I want the life Jesus offers, then I'm going to pray a prayer out loud. And as I pray this prayer out loud, I'm going to ask you to pray it silently in your heart. Talk directly to God. And tell him this, say, Jesus, I want a relationship with you. Jesus, I want the life you offer. I want to connect to the source of true life. And I want to surrender to your Heavenly Father who's going to prune and protect me for the rest of my days. I admit that I have made mistakes. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I understand that those sins broke our relationship. I also believe that you sent your Son to die in my place to remove the penalty I deserved. I believe that after he died on Friday that you brought him back to life on Sunday and that he walked out of that grave as proof that I could have a better life as well. And so at this moment, I commit my life to you. I'm in. I will do what I can each day to remain in you. I will choose to walk with you. And I will trust that you are producing more in me than I can possibly imagine. I thank you, Father, for saving me. Now I want you to keep your eyes bowed and your heads bowed and your eyes closed for a second because if you prayed that prayer, 
We believe eternity just changed. We believe your life will never be the same. And as your church, it is our privilege to walk with you for the rest of your life as you choose to remain in your Heavenly Father. And it's going to be a series of steps. Steps to following Him. And so we always like to give people a chance immediately to take a first step. It's an ability to go public in a very private way with what's just happened. And here's how we do it. Everybody's got their heads bowed and their eyes closed, but I'm going to count to three in a minute. When I count to three, if you prayed that prayer with me, if you began that relationship with Jesus today, I'm going to ask you to just raise your hand and keep it raised for a few moments. Just as a very first, very private, public declaration of what's happened in your heart. Ready? One, two, three. Just raise your hand. Just lift it up high. Lift it up. Just imagine that it is the very first time you're reaching out to your Heavenly Father. You're reaching out for His love. You're reaching out for His grace. You're reaching out for His forgiveness. You're reaching out for His acceptance. You're saying, I trust you, I love you, and I want you to walk with me for the rest of my life. And He joyfully says, with all His heart, I'll be with you forever. Okay, you can put your hands down and look at me for just a moment. We have been given an invitation by the God of the universe to live lives beyond our wildest dreams. Lives that impact eternity. Lives that literally change the world. And those lives begin with a choice. Will we remain in Jesus? Will we walk with Jesus? So this week, ask God to open your eyes to where you've strayed. Determine to take a step back. And then join us as we discover how to live lives full of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. As we each take steps to truly live fruit-forward lives. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just love you so much. We're so thankful for your son. We're thankful for his willingness to die in our place. God, I thank you that you invite us to join you in this journey, that you invite us to remain with you. Father, may we each take a step toward you this week. And even as we take it, Father, may your Holy Spirit produce instant fruit in us. May we instantly see the results of obedience, the results of remaining because you are good and we know you are the true source of all life we love you we see your son's name we pray amen amen <laughs> am i living my life fruit forward such a challenging question but such a life-changing question as well if we commit to it well my name is eric and i'm on staff here and i know that for some of you today, you decided for the very first time to begin living your life fruit forward. And if that's you, we're excited about that. We want to know about that. And we'd love for you, for you to uh, take a moment and talk to somebody today. If you will, if you can stop by uh, after the service, we have a blue room just off of our lobby. Or you can stop by our tent. Or to make it really easy, if you scan the QR code in front of you, there's a button on there that says, I raise my hand my hand. Now what? We try to make it really easy for you. We'd love to connect with you today. Well, we're coming to a time that we celebrate each and every week here. Hey, Wellspring, it's time to give our offering. We're excited about this time. We're excited to celebrate this time because we know when we give, we're giving to see more lives changed. If you uh, came prepared today, you can give online through our app. You can give at the boxes uh, on your way out, or you can give online as well. Uh, this whole month, we have been talking about the three-month tithe challenge. It's something that we have done throughout our history, and it's simply an opportunity to begin tithing. And it works this way. You simply commit to tithing for three months. At the end of that three months, if you're not totally blown away by how God has blessed you and the freedom of trusting Him in this important way, we give you your money back. We do that because this is such an important area to trust God in. 
And so we'd love to encourage you to do that. We've heard many stories over these last few weeks uh, and it's been challenging to us and encouraging to us. We heard, uh, we talked to a family here recently and they said, hey, we began this challenge in 2019. And instead of seeing abundance immediately, as we've heard over and over in these stories, they faced challenges. They faced some hurdles. And it led to them starting uh, their own business. I want, to, I want you to hear what they had to say about this challenge. It said, it hasn't been easy, but they've stuck to trusting God with their tithe. Don't miss this part. They said, God has provided us day after day, even in the littlest of ways. We've never not had what we needed. We trusted God anyway, and he came through time and time again. We'd love for you to join so many and take this challenge. If, you, if you're interested in that, you can scan your QR code. You can also sign up online. I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to continue on. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you uh, for helping us think about how we are living our lives. Help us consider ways that we can live a fruit-forward life so that we can show the world around us uh, the amazing traits, the amazing qualities, the amazing things that you give us. Help us to give those things away. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to give, and I pray that you will bless uh, so many through the gifts that we give. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll stand to your feet, and we're going to sing one more song. My place upon 